WPA and WPA2 are very good encryptions. If you're using WPA, you're using RC4, but you're using TKIP with that. And if you're using WPA2, well, you're using AES with CCMP, and you are not going to be able to crack these passwords, except for one little problem. And the problem is, is the initial connection between a wireless WPA or WPA2 client to an access point has what we call a four-way handshake. And not that many years ago, there was a small weakness discovered in this four-way handshake that allows us to do something very interesting. Now, I need to be careful here. When you're cracking WEP, you can mathematically derive the password just by looking at packets. You can't do that with WPA and WPA2. With WP and WPA2, think more instead that you've got this guy who's really good at turning the numbers on a bicycle lock and then pulling on it. So you can go up to this guy and say, hey, try 0000, and he can do that real quick and pull on it. So if you wanted to, you could tell this guy, start with all zeros, and then just keep going and go to 9999. Now, now if there was only, that would be 10,000 different permutations, that would work great. But with WPA, WPA2, take that same bike lock analogy and turn it from four digits to like 128 digits. So it would take that guy, even if he was fast, a very, very long time to go through all these. Luckily for us, we know that human beings don't use good randomized long passwords. We know that most human beings are going to use like a phrase and then a number or their pet's name and then the date they were born or the number of kids they have and their wife's name and the date that they got married. Little simple things like that. And if we know that, we can tell the guy who's spinning on that bicycle lock, no, 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 don't start at the zeros. Just try all of these first. So we've got to give this WPA, WPA2 cracker what we call a dictionary file. Now, a dictionary file is nothing more than a big text file that is full, and I mean full of tens of millions of different types of permutations of well-known words with numbers and all kinds of different things. Now, you'd think, well, tens of millions. Well, Compared to 128th power stuff, 10 million, even my laptop, give it a day, could knock all that stuff out. So it makes a big difference. So what we're going to be doing with WPA and WPA2 is we're going to go ahead and grab not a whole bunch of packets. What we're going to grab is those four-way handshakes when people start to connect. And using that, we can derive the passwords by using a dictionary file, basically saying, try all these, and if people use it, then we're going to have them. So let's go ahead and start off by let me showing you how the setup works this time. So I've got my same wireless access point. Now he's still set to WEP at this moment. So we're going to change him to regular old just WPA PSK and get him up and running. And we'll put a really weak password on here. Then we're going to go back over to the Kali box. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're still going to monitor the traffic, but we're just going to wait for somebody to authenticate, and we got them. We'll run the cracker, and with luck, since it's a weak password, we're going to be able to get it pretty easily. So let's take a look at the setup. All right, so let's go over here, and first of all, instead of calling it Not Secure Web, let's call it Not Secure WPA. And let me apply that. We'll wait a sec. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go over to Wireless Security, and we're going to take off WEP and let's go to WPA Personal. This type of attack will work with WPA or WPA2 Personal Shared Key. So I've already got a password in here and I want to keep it. Now the password is Timmy Timmy. So it's a pretty simple password. It's just a very common word used twice. So let me go ahead and apply all this. We'll save it. And we're pretty much ready to go. So this guy is now WPA Personal. He has a very simple password of Timmy Timmy. And now what we're going to do is go over here. We're going to grab a bunch of data. But in particular, we're not just grabbing data. We're looking for handshakes. And that's where AeroDump does a great job. Let me show you. Now, what I've got here is I've got AeroDump still running on my screen. Now, if you take a look right here at top, you're going to see there's not secure WPA. You can even see that it's WPA 
and it's running TKIP, no great surprise there. And there's the MAC address for it. So what we're gonna do now is let's start AeroDump and we're gonna watch for handshakes. I'm gonna put all the stuff that it finds into a file called WPA file. And this guy's on channel six. And the BSS ID. Is 20 colon AA colon 4B colon 42 colon 43 colon E8. And we're going to tell them to listen on WLAN 0 mod. So what we're going to do now is just keep watching this and see if somebody comes in. There it is. Wow, that was really quick. Let's go ahead and take a look at that file and go ahead and see if we can pull the password out. So we can go ahead and just turn this off. And let me make sure I've got a dictionary file in there. There he is, way up at the top. You see the word dictionary. That's a dictionary file that I've created. So to actually go about the cracking, is we just go ahead and run air crack. A2 means I'm doing a WPA uh, attack on this guy. So I got to tell it where my dictionary file is. It's right here in the same folder. So I just type in dictionary. And then I tell it which file I want to crack. In this case, it's going to be WPA file dash 01.cap. We hit enter. Ta da! There it is right there. See it? Pretty easy stuff. Now you'd be looking at this, you're going, no, wait a minute, wait, 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 Mike. You put the right password into your dictionary file. Yeah, I did, but I did that just to speed up this demonstration. Trust me, there are huge dictionary files and they got Timmy Timmy in there just as easily. If you have a weak WPA or WPA2 PSK, odds are good that people will be able to crack it almost as quickly as what I've done right here. The right answer is simple. Use long, complex, private shared keys when you're dealing with WPA and WPA2. A lot of people recommend don't use any human words and make sure you use at least 20 characters, which can sometimes be long to remember, but boy does it make it secure.